We can't stop now. Whew, thank you, Lord. Father, what kind of love is this? That when we were against you, you still loved us. We were against you. We were running from you, and you're running towards us. What an encouraging word for somebody today that may be sitting in here, and they're running from you, or they're against you. And you're right there. You never leave us. Lord, just personally thinking that the walls that you kicked down, the mountains you climbed up, just coming after me. Because I was lost as a sheep could be. In the briars, in the thorns, I got myself in such a bind, I was so lost. But that didn't stop you, Jesus. So, Lord, we thank you for how much you love us today. Thank you that we could praise you. Thank you that a room full of people that was running from you are now in your arms. That's mind-blowing. So, Lord, we love you. We, we're forever grateful for your grace and your mercy, your forgiveness. I thank you, Lord, that you never changed your mind about us. And you do never change your mind about us. Lord, I feel like that's for somebody in here right now today that they think that you've changed your mind according to them. Lord, there's nothing we can do to separate ourselves from your love. So, Lord, we love you. We thank you. So, God, I pray you give us ears to hear what you're going to teach us today in this word, your life-changing word. Meet us all right where we are, whatever season we're in. That's just how good you are. Lord, we love you. We thank you. We're glad it's Sunday. And in Jesus' name we pray. And the church was not quiet when they said amen. amen. That's what I'm talking about. Give the Lord a big, big hand. Give him a hand. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Well, good morning, y'all. Who's your Lord and Savior? That was a few of you. Who is your Lord and who is your Savior? Jesus. That's a, you hear that bass? You hear that little bass in there? Yeah. If you have your Bibles, just open that thing open. Get it open. It doesn't, good, it doesn't do any good sitting on a coffee table or in the back, back wind, windshield of your vehicle, <laughs> right? I was driving down the road the other day, and I saw one with all this sun that the leather had just done kicked up on one side. That Bible looked rough. I don't think they could use it anymore. <laughs> the sun doesn't got that Bible. That's not what your Bible's for. Did I tell you where to go? Okay. Matthew 28. Let's go to Matthew 28. You glad you came to church? Yes. It's a holiday weekend. Y'all in the church house. That is next level. <laughs> so we've been talking about the unfinished work. You see, that's a, a house that's not finished. Who would ever live in that, right? You want it to be finished, right? You want somewhere to cook your chicken. Amen. Jesus loved us so much that he left heaven. He came to this earth and he wrapped himself in flesh. He was born just like we were born. Okay? That's huge. That's a, that's a humbling that you'll never can even wrap your mind around. Perfect holiness steps down to our, our earth. Right? And he came to do some amazing things. He came to one to love on us. He came to serve us in the most incredible way possible. And he came to be a light. Mark 10 verse 45 tells us that he didn't come to be served, 
but he says he came to serve us. How did he serve his church? It says that he gave his life as a ransom for many. In other words, he paid our sin debt. How did he pay it? He didn't pay it with a credit card. He paid it with his life in the most horrific way possible. Beaten beyond human resemblance at a whipping post, then carried a cross upon a hill, and he was crucified on a cross. Now, as he did that, he said something from the cross that we really need to get a hold of. He says these words after he says, God, forgive them because they don't really know what they're doing. He says these words right here. He says, it is finished. Okay, don't ever forget those words. What's finished? What he came to do, his purpose on this earth was absolutely finished. His physical work on earth completed, done, finished. But here's the thing, and this is where this, this series has come from. Yes, his work is finished on earth, but his work ain't finished on earth. His work physically done, but the work ain't done. Now, he didn't leave us alone. It says when he ascended to heaven, and you can read this in the book of Acts, it wasn't long that he sent his very own spirit, his spirit, Jesus, into anyone and everyone that would believe. You can read that in Acts 2. And it says now we're empowered with Jesus in us to finish the work that he started. That's what we've been talking about for three weeks. Okay? Let's look at it again here. Matthew 28. In verse 19 and 20, it tells us to go. I don't know how we can go if we're still sitting down, right? How do we go if we're still in idle? You, 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 hit the, you hit the D in the drive for a reason because you're about to go somewhere. And he wants us to go. What are we going to go do? He says, go and make disciples of nations. In other words, go and find some other ones that, that want to be disciplined like you. What do you mean disciplined? In other words, to lay yourself down and follow the Lord. Go find folk like that. Notice what he said. Go, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Notice what he said. Teach them to observe all the things that I have commanded you. And oh, by the way, I'm always with you. And I'm with you to the end of age. In other words, when I come back to get you, I never did leave you. My spirit has been in you. That's amazing right there. Okay? So what does that mean? He said there's still work to be done. We got to get to work. And that's what we've been talking about. He tells us to now, I was there building relationships. I was there loving on folk. I was there serving people, right? I was there being a light. I was there sharing the truth, giving principles and promises. Hey, y'all do the same thing. I've already, he's already laid the groundwork. He's always already put the blueprint out there. Now he wants us to follow it and do what he was doing. Does that make sense? He was a light, so he wants us to be a light. That's what we talked about last week. What's the big deal about light? Light has influence. If we cut them off right now, we couldn't see a thing. You'd have to break out your phone and hit your little light. Light has influence. Listen, and when, when, when you have influence on somebody, then you're valuable to them. If you shine a light for your papa, I'll remember, or your daddy, uh, while he's working on a car. You remember them days? That'll straighten you out right there. Hold the light, son. Hold the light. Well, you look, you're looking way over there. I'm trying to work right here. Hold the light. <laughs> so when you're holding it now, when I try to get my boys to hold the light, then they hold it over here. I understand what my daddy was talking about. And you just want to throat punch them. Right? <laughs> but when you, when you shine that light to that spot, that becomes valuable to you because now you can see. Now we can go to work. Why? Because we can see. Listen to me, we looked it up last week, that God says that we are the candle. We are God's candle. We are God's light. We are God's candle, and he walks into the darkness with us. Why? Because he's wanting us to shine. Listen, I said this last week, this is so important. He put some of his brightest lightest lights in the darkest places. Think, think about where you work right now. Think about the people you're around right now. And you may be like, I hate this. I, this, is, this sucks. Hey, you're probably there for a reason. Why am I on this job right now? Why am, I, why am I over here? Why am I having to be around these people? Light, 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 my friend. 
You're supposed to be a light. I'm so glad when I was in darkness for the ones that God put in my path to light it up. Are you? It's amazing. It's amazing. Has he used you to be light this week? Have you lit up some darkness this week? I walked in J.O. Williams, I think uh, Thursday or Friday. I can't remember which day it was. And there was a young lady sitting at the front. Her name was Mary. And my goodness, I was going, you know, anywhere I go, I really try to, try to say something about the Lord somewhere. Well, I tried to share my story, and then she shared her story. She lit me up lighter than I was trying to light up. And when I heard that young lady's story, it just, man, I, when I left there, I just started weeping about her story, her rescue story. To see where Jesus has brought her from. It's amazing when you try to light somebody, they light you. You just keep going back and forth. Bunch of glow worms. Let's go to, let's go to Proverbs chapter 24. So, let's go a little deeper this morning with this unfinished work business. Because, guys, there is some work to be done. We, we, being, being idle is not an option. We are blessed to have breath in our lungs. We're blessed to have people in our life. We need to really, really take advantage of, those, of this time and be thankful for this time. So look at Proverbs 24, and we're going to look at verse 30. Can't, I don't know if we remember if I've shared this lately or not, but this is so good for what we're talking about today. We're going to actually go to Nehemiah after this. We're going to talk about Nehemiah, and uh, so this sets us up for that. But look at verse 30, Proverbs. Everybody there? So he says that he went by the field of a lazy man. Went by the lazy man's field. I don't even know how the lazy man even has a field if he's lazy. Well... If he's got a field, he probably at one time had some fire in him. It, maybe at one time he had a vision. Like, hey, I'm going to get this field and I'm going to plant. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. But then w w w he, did he lose his vision? He got lazy because it says there's the lazy man and he has a field. He said he went by the vineyard. So in other words, he was probably making some grapes, planting some grapes, right? So he went by the vineyard of a man, what does it say, that he was devoid of understanding. In other words, he had all this amazing stuff in front of him. He had this field, he had all this potential, but he didn't understand what he had. Come on, somebody, read between the lines here. You've got all this in front of you, but you're devoid of understanding because you're distracted with other things, and we don't realize what's right here in front of us. We don't understand these beautiful children and these grandchildren that we have and these other people that are in our life that are there for a reason. We, want, we don't want to be distracted with other things. When the, the, We need to be where we are. We need to actually be there if we're there. How many people do you know, you can talk to them and it's like you're looking right through them. They're not there. They're a million miles away. Look at verse 31. And there it was. This, this, notice the place. He looks, he looks at this lazy man's field. This is a, a, a man that's distracted. We're looking at his vineyard. And it said, and there it was. It was all overgrown. Does that shock you? It was overgrown. It had thorns. And its surf, surface was covered with nettles. And then it tells you why it's like this. It says the stone wall has been broken down. Ah. My papa, we had, we had guard, two huge gardens. He had electric fence around both of them. And you knew when the deer had been in, you see, you see them where they nipped the, 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 the buds off. And you're like, w -w 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 what happened? And you go over there and grab that electric fence. And it was off. Oh, man. Well, it's the same thing with this man. They didn't have electric fence back there, but what they had was walls. They had stone walls around their field where nothing could get in there. So why is it all grown up? Because the man was lazy. He didn't know what he had. He was distracted with other things. His, he was so distracted, he didn't care about his security anymore. Come on, somebody. He didn't care about his, his boundaries anymore. In other words, he didn't have any boundaries like he used to have. So things can come in, rob and do whatever, and leave. No consequences. That's what it's saying. You see it? 
Okay, so this is a picture. When I'm studying this, this is a picture of somebody's light that's gone out. This is somebody that has lost their peace, their joy. It's someone that's probably made some bad decisions in their life, some bad choices, and they've been robbed, they've been lied to. Now they have no hope, they have no vision. They have no, let's just say it like this, they have no want to anymore. You know anybody that lost their want to? This man doesn't want to anymore. His guard has dropped, and he's become what we call idle. Y'all with me? The main, one of the main purposes of our life, and God's will for our life is this, is to be fruitful. To be fruitful. If you were to plant a tree in your yard and it didn't bear fruit, you'd cut it down. Why? Because you want some apples or some oranges or whatever you're planting. Right? It, it, listen, God, God's will for our life is to be fruitful and not bad fruit, but good fruit. See, bad fruit eats itself. We don't want to have fruit that eats itself. We want to have fruit that other people can enjoy. His will is not for us to become overgrown with thorns and weeds. Well, how do you know all this, Brother Scott? Well, Genesis 2.15 tells us when we read the scripture, it says that, that God put man in a garden. He said, he said right off the bat, he put he him in the garden of Eden. He put man in the garden. What did it, it was two things he told him to do. He said, I want you to tend to it and I want you to keep it. Well, what does that mean? He says, in other words, I want you to work it, and I want you to protect it. Men, ladies, mamas, daddies, grandmas, grandpa, we got kids in our life. We got children in our life. We got people in our life, and our job is to what? Tend and keep. Work, protect. Amen. <laughs> oh, my goodness, it's hard to get that out of y'all this morning. Okay, okay, if we do not do that, then what happens is we become overgrown and fruitless. Okay, do you want your kids to become overgrown with thorns and weeds and other things and become fruitless? But that's what happens when you got a mom and daddy, grandma, grandpa, uh, uh, a preacher, Sunday school teacher, whatever, that becomes overgrown and fruitless. In other words, they lose their fire. The stone wall being broken down is going to let the wolves in. It's going to let the lions in. When, 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 when we allow the wolves and the lions in, and we know who those are, then, we, then, we, then we're scared to tend and keep because there's lions and, and wolves in our field, and now we don't really know how to tend and keep, and we just let them have their way. 1 Peter 5, verse 8 says about, about the enemy. He says, he tells us, hey, first of all, we need to be sober. We need to be vigilant. Why? Because our enemy, our adversary, the devil, right, is like a what? A roaring lion. And what is he doing? He's looking for somewhere to bed down and just get some sleep? No, he's like a royal lion. He's seeking, he's going to and fro. What? Looking for somebody to what? Devour. Devouring is not beautiful. That's not pretty. And if you're in here today and you, you've been robbed, you're, you've been robbed and you've been devoured and you, you've been ripped apart, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's not fun, is it? See, over and over, Jesus warns us about wolves, too. And he says, these, these wolves are coming, and, but they're going to look like a sheep. They're going to say all the bah and stuff like that to you. <laughs> they're, they're, they're a wolf. They're a wolf. Wolves and lions are of the enemy. They're of the devil. I don't know if you've ever read this scripture, but in Proverbs 26, verse 13, it says, The lazy man says he ain't going to do anything today because there's a lion in the road. Did you know that was in the Bible? It says, it says, he says, he walks outside, Ah! I ain't going to do anything today. There's a lion in the road. I'm not going out there. There's a lion in the road. And then what happens? What happens? Think about it. I'm not going out there today. I've got a good excuse not to do anything because there's a lion out there in my field. There's a lion in my road. Instead of saying, dead gummit, there's a lion in my road. Let's go get him out of there. We give an excuse and say, no, there's a lion in the road. There's a wolf out there. 
I can't do this. I'm not equipped for this. Oh, my goodness. It, it, it's so much easier to give an excuse and let somebody else handle it. When you and me, we've been called to handle it. So, so be careful that your lying doesn't become your excuse. Go to your left to Nehemiah. Let's go. This sets us up real good for Nehemiah. Nehemiah is one of the shorter men in the Bible. Nehemiah. Boy. Man, I thought y'all liked that one. That's a good one. That's a good one, Coach. Nehemiah. Did you find it yet? That was funny, wasn't it? Page 651. If you got my Bible. <laughs> so we're talking about an unfinished work. Please hear me. I couldn't think of a better work that we could do for one another than help them build their wall back or help them pull weeds and thorns. Honestly, I couldn't think of a better work we could be doing than that right there. Get in there, help pull weeds, help get the thorns out. Do anything we possibly can to get them back fruitful again. Because they were probably once fruitful, right? Because here's you're going to see with Nehemiah, he hears that Jerusalem, the walls have been torn down and the gates have been burned. We're talking about Jerusalem. We're talking about the city of the Lord. We're talking about a place where there used to be joy, a place that there used to be worship, a, ch a place where there used to be passion and praise, right? Tore down, desolate. Look at it in Nehemiah 1. We're going to read a few verses right here. Lord, help me with these words, these names. The, word, the words of Nehemiah, because I only have an Arkansas education. The words of Nehemiah, the son of Hakali, maybe, maybe, it came to pass in the month of Chislev. You know what month that is. In the twelfth year, as I was in Shushan, the citadel. That Hananiah, one of my brethren, came with men from Judah. And I asked them concerning the Jews who had escaped and who had survived and the captivity concerning Jerusalem. And this is what they said. They said the survivors who are left from the captivity in the province are there in great distress and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down. Its gates are burned with fire. This is sad. Think about a life here. Verse 4 says, So when, when I heard these things, I sat down and wept, and he mourned for many days. I was fasting and praying before the God of heaven. Yes, he was. What would you be doing when you hear something's happened to your friend? Right? Kind of the same thing. Something's happened to their field. Right? They're crew. So Nehemiah hears of destruction, right? And wants a place full of praise. And the first thing he does, he begins to cry, but then he immediately begins to pray. And he says, Lord, what can I do? Now, as we get into this story, I want, you, you, we're, you're, you've probably been in both of these, these courts here. One side or the other. And you may be in one now, but you know what it means to be in the other. Okay. One is this, Lord, I know how it feels to be broken, robbed, and helpless. I want to help. Okay, I've got my gloves on. I'm ready to pull weeds. I'm ready to get these thorns cut out of here. And I'm, 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 I'm going to help them with the stone wall. We're going to get these walls back up. I'll do anything I possibly can for them. That's one way, but then the other way is this. You're the one broken down by circumstances, addictions maybe. You've lost, right? You've lost something or someone. You, 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 you divorce. 
maybe a bad breakup, you, you feel very little hope. I mean, there's just something that, 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 you, that you can't kick. And, you, and, and you're like, man, I don't know what to do. So you, we, we're either in one of those, and we probably know what it means to feel and be in both of those courts, right? Please hear me. I want to give you some hope. Because God is a God of restoration. Okay? He, he thrives when someone is broken. He says in his word that he's near. He's nearer to those that are broken. Because he knows what it means to be broken. Okay? He, 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 listen, he is the God of restoration. It doesn't matter how broken you are. He says he gives, we learned this last week, he can give you beauty for ashes. Can somebody say amen that that's happened to you? He gives you joy for your mourning. Has it happened to you? And so if you're mourning in here today, the joy is what you can trade that for. If you're in here this morning and you got just ashes, just, ash, just dust in your life, you can actually trade that for what? Beauty. If, you, if you're feeling heavy today, you can actually trade that for praise. You really can. Or listen, maybe, because he's a God that turns graves into gardens. Isn't that what we sing? So he can actually take your grave. You, 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 you think you're done and God is done with you, but he can, he can make your garden be fruitful again. Yes, he can. So jump to Nehemiah 2, verse 17. Let's watch what happens here. It's funny, my son texts me right in the middle of my message. And he's, he's not here, he's out of town. <laughs> Boy, <laughs> isn't that something, love? Isn't that something? I said to them, I need to do something in my garden. <laughs> you know? Then I said to him, you see the distress that we're in. How Jerusalem lies waste, its gates are burned, it's fire. Come, come, what? Come on, come on, somebody. Let us build the wall of Jerusalem again. That we may no longer be a reproach. He says, and I told them of the hand of my God. Watch this. We ain't doing this alone. The hand of my God, which been it bit upon is, is good upon me, up on me. The king's word is spoken to me as well. So they said, let us rise up and do what? Build. So what did they do? They set their hands to the good work. It's a good work. Pulling weeds and thorns and building, helping somebody build a wall, help somebody get out of mess, that's a great work. And it's an unfinished work today. But watch this. Enter Sanballat. Sanballat is a, somebody you want to throat punch. But Sanballat, and notice he was a horror night. That doesn't sound good. <laughs> and Tobiah, <laughs> the Ammonite, he's part of the termites. And Geshem, and here come the Arabs, Geshem the Arab heard of it. They laughed at us. Mm. They despised us and said, what is this thing you are doing? Will you rebel against the king? In other words, they're on the other side. They don't want to see anybody's life restored. Do you know anybody like this? They don't want to see anybody's life restored. They're going to laugh. They're going to mock. They're not for you. They clown you like. You think you can be restored? Ah! You, the devil tell you this. This is the devil. You've done too much. You, you've done it one too many times. There's no more grace left. But then we start believing it. Tell the truth. The devil hates restoration. So Nehemiah, he starts to lead this, this, this team. And he's like, if you really, I, hey, listen, I challenge y'all to read the book of Nehemiah. It's amazing. That way you can go. I'm just going to hit the highlights here for time's sake. Because if we get in it, we're going to get in it. Okay? So, so he tells each person, you do what you can in front of your house. You, work, you do the work that's in front of your house. And this one do the work in front of their house. And this one do the work in front of their house. And if this one's a little slower, after this one gets done, they're going to help them. Everybody pitches in, right? See, the devil hates that. 
So this is why there's always, listen to the word opposition, there's always opposition when we try to do anything for the Lord. There's always going to be. It's going to come. Th- think about what that word says. It, opposition is this. It's opposed position. Once you stand up and you say, I'm going to help. I'm going to do the work. Or you're the ones that says, I'm tired of being, being the lazy man. I'm tired of being, being broke down, busted, and disgusted. I'm going to actually do something here. The devil comes in and he says, mm-mm. You, he opposes that position you have. Isn't it something how you were so good, everything was just great in your life? Not really. But when you gave your life to Jesus, then all the crap came. Wonder why. devil hates it. He hates restraint. That's why he mocks you. Mm. Late 2003... I walked into Summerbrook Apartments in Longview. And I walked in and I was broken. I was confused. I was burned to the ground. I had no more walls. Some of you don't know this. I was married before. Gave my life to Jesus. She really didn't like that dude like that anymore. She wanted the bad boy that wanted to fight and cuss and carry on. Not anymore. If you talk to her now, she's totally different. But that wasn't working out for her at that moment. She said, we're getting a divorce. Three-year-old baby girl. You want to know how hard it was to drive out the driveway that day seeing your daughter screaming and crying, Daddy, where are you going? I had lost it all in my eyes. And I know some of you way worse than this. I'm just giving you a little taste, just a little something that I went through. But I'm going to show you how good God is. So I walk into Summerbrook Apartments with nothing but a PlayStation 1 and a TV. <laughs> a TV that had the VCR in the bottom. <laughs> Top of the line. Tasco or something. I don't even remember what it was. Now it's something. <laughs> Never mind. I ain't going to go into all that. So, so, so I walk in and I, and I, and I go and, 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 and I'm standing there at the counter and I look at this, this goddess over here in the corner, and she's long legs, and, and she's making copies. She ain't seen me yet, you know. And uh, anyway, long story short, I meet Cody, my wife. She's ducking over there. She's the one with the hat on. She was the one singing right here. Long story short, she didn't want to have anything to do with me. I had children, she, or a child. She didn't want to have anything to do with me, but the Mac Daddy. I, put, I, said, I, said, I said, girl, you need to drop all them zeros and get with the hero. And I asked her at first day, I said, I said, your feet tired? She said, no, why? I said, you've been running through my mind ever since I saw you, girl. Stuff worked back in 03, y'all. Don't use that now, young man. Don't use that now. Anyway, two stories. If you hear her broken walls and if you hear her, her burned down gates come together and we came together. We met and married in three months. Listen, listen. We knew, Boy, I knew. Oh, I had to really press to make her, like I, make her say yes. But she finally did. <laughs> we were so, she'll tell you, we were so mocked. That ain't gonna work out. Y'all shouldn't be together. This ain't right. Met and married in three months. It's never worked. I mean, we just, there were, and there was so much that come against us, like lies and stuff. I just can't even go into it. But let me tell you something. God is a God of restoration. He took two broken stories, but two rescue stories, and He brings them together. And here we are 20 years later. Come on, somebody. <laughs> God's not done. 
Because let me tell you something. I was about to go off the deep end, and I know how you are. You may be in here today, and you've, you've served the Lord. You have fired, but this thing has happened, and you've been broken down, and you're like, you think, man, I can justify just going off the deep end. Let me tell you something. I was there. I was about to go off the deep end, probably back to who I used to be, like a dog returns to where he throws up. I was about to go there, and God said, not so quick, my friend. When you think there's no other way, there is a way. He's the God of making a way. I'm going to tell you, I've seen it in my own life. Amen. Anyway, y'all talk, get Cody's story another day. So look at Nehemiah 4. So I see this in this garden, in this, 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 the way these walls are broken down in Jerusalem. I felt like that. And we got this mocker, this, this one that is mocking us. And watch, it continues here in Nehemiah 4. Look at verse 1. It happened when Sanballat, you're going to hate that name, by the way. Oh, don't mind name your child that, Sanballat. <laughs> Heard that we were rebuilding the wall. He was furious, he was indig indignant, and he mocked the Jews, the godly people. He spoke before his brethren, the army of Samaria, and he said, What are these, watch this, feeble Jews doing? Will they fortify themselves? Will they start offering sacrifices again? Will they complete it in a day? Will they revive the stones from the heaps of the rubbish and the stones that were burned? They are, he's clowning them like crazy. Surely y'all are not going to come praise the Lord here again. You're not going to build a temple here again. Y'all ain't going to have church here again. You're not going to raise family here, here again. <laughs> That's what he's doing. Doesn't that sound like the devil? I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now. God does his best work when there's not much to work with. That word rubbish literally means dust, ashes. Like, like That's all they got to work with. I mean, they got some stones, but the gates are burned down. It's like, what, what, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? God does his best work. When there's hardly nothing to work with. Think about it. Think about the little boy. The disciples are there that day and they're looking around like, man, it's getting dark. Everybody's hungry. And there's like 5,000 men. So there's got to be more women and children. There's probably 20,000 people there that day. Let's make a run to McDonald's. It's like, even if you, they had a McDonald's, who got that much money? Even on the 99 cent menu. Think about it. If everybody got one thing, 99 cents, <laughs> $20,000 plus tax. Yes. Yes. So everybody, two would have to split 99 cent menu. Okay. So I don't even think they have that anymore. No, no more 99 cent menu. Anyway, now it's $5 menu. Anyway, think about it. Even a dollar tree ain't a dollar anymore. Just give me one rib. That's all. I can't, I can't afford the rack. Just give me one rib. I don't need a cup. Just pour it in my hand for a dime, you know. Anyway. <laughs> I forgot what I was saying. Anyway. Duh, they have nothing to work with. They have nothing to work with. But here we go. A little boy comes up with a few fish and a few loaves of bread. And Jesus does this first. He Thought, he said, Lord, I thank you for what we do have. That's, that's one of the biggest tools of the devil right there. He wants you to focus on what you don't have and what everybody else has. Okay? But what did Jesus do? He thanked God for what they did have. And then he started handing it out. And they kept handing it out. And it says they had 12 left over, them, them little containers, you know, right? 12 baskets left over. From, what, two fish and five loaves? Something like that. Is that not incredible? And this is the God we serve. we got to stop focusing on what we don't. The enemy wants us to focus on what we don't have. He, all he needs is a little seed of faith. All he needs is a little seed of hope. Listen, Ephesians 3.20 says this. He is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, more than we possibly can imagine. So look at verse 6. So we built the wall. The entire wall was joined together up to half its height. So they're halfway, right? For the people had a mind, oh, I love this, 
to work. Let's go. Isn't that beautiful? What if we all walked out of here today and we all had a mind to go to work? Again, un the unfinished work. And we need to be working too so we can eat. It happened. There, well, sand ballot again. Good gracious, we can't get rid of this dude. Sand ballot, Tobiah, the Arabs, the Ammonites, the Ashadites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were being restored and the gaps were beginning to be closed. They got, they got ticked off. Verse 8 says, They came, conspired together. Come, let us attack uh, Jerusalem and create some confusion. Doesn't this sound like the devil? Nevertheless, we made our prayer to God, and because of them, we set a watch against them day and night. Oh, now we're getting somewhere. They heard all the mouthing. They heard all the confusion. And what did they do? They started praying, and they set a watch. Let me tell you something. I love that, that in that one song uh, that says this. It says, when the, when the, when the liar starts mouthing off. Because that's all he is, right? It says he's the father of lies. When the, when the liar starts mouthing off, you shut him up with prayer. That's the, the, the louder the lies are, we watch and we pray. And we got to watch each other's back. You'll see this here in just a minute. Look at verse 10. Judah said, the strength of the laborers is failing. See, it's working. There's, there's, the, the, the devil's confusing. Listen, there's 12 tribes of Israel. And Judah is the one of praise. Okay, Judah represents praise. And it's Judah saying in verse 10 that the strengths of the laborers are failing. Watch this. There's so much rubbish that we're not even able to build the wall. And he says, our adversary said, they will neither know nor see anything till we come in the midst and kill them cause the work, and cause the work to cease. So they're scared of what the enemy is saying. Watch verse 12. So it was when the Jews who dwelt near them came that they told us ten times from whatever place you turn, they're going to be up on us. In other words, we can't do this, y'all. I want you to hear this. This is, this, is, this is so important. If Judah represents praise, then you see the praise, the praise is listening to the confusion. Think about it for a minute. Okay? The praise, the pra what represents praise is stopping. Have you noticed when negativity is falling in your life, it hurts your praise? If, you, if you're in one little argument out in the car before you come into church, you don't even sing. Tell the truth. Right? Some of you turn around and leave. Ah, we got cameras out there. I can see. I'm just playing. <laughs> I'm just playing. That's what we do is so we can pray for you. Right? They, they pull up. <laughs> Devil said, got them. You think about it. If somebody was really broken down today and hurt, don't you think they need to be in here this message? Uh -huh. Why? Because it would give them hope. So he, don't want, he wants you to be fruitless, not fruitful. Okay, think about it. Have you ever noticed how your praise stops when, it's, when, when, when negative things happen? So the, the enemy can affect your praise. He's already got praise. He's already has Judah saying, no, we can't do this. But watch this, verse 13. I love the resiliency. Therefore, I position men behind the lower parts of the wall at the openings. I set the people according to their families with their swords and their spears and their bows. Now we're fighting. And I looked, rose up, and said to the nobles, of the leaders, and to the rest of the people, Do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord. Remember the Lord. Watch this. You need to underline this. You need to write. You can highlight whatever you got. Remember the Lord. He is great and he is awesome. Fight for your brethren. Fight for your sons. Fight for your daughters. Fight for your wives. Fight for your families. Come on, somebody. We got it. Listen, this is a worthy fight. Are we going to let the wolves come in and take them from us? We got to get that wall built back. We got to get discernment built back up. We got to get our spotty sense right back up. No, what we need is conviction. We need conviction today more than ever. So what is he saying? Guys, don't fear. Don't fear. Remember the Lord. He is great and awesome. Fight for your family. Fight for your brother. Fight for your sister. 
Amen. Fight for your wife, your husband. Fight for your children. Fight for your house. It's a noble fight. You got to fight. What is tearing down your family right now? What is that thing that's tearing down your family? It's the same as sand ballot. I don't know what it is, but you know, fight for that. Get that out of there. Get. What if a coon run up in your house when you got home? Say you coming in with something. You, y'all going to eat at the house today. You come in. You, you, you went by the uh, $5 menu. You got you something. And a coon run in the house because it smelled the food. What would you do? Yeah. Get him out of there. Yeah. Get out of here. Why don't you do that to the devil when he's trying to get on your kids? Or do we even know that the devil is getting on our kids? Do you even know what they're looking at? WW dot what? Uh-oh. Fear. Y'all have heard this before. There, it says do not fear 365 times in the scripture. Why? We got 365 days in our year. One for each day. Don't be scared. You know what fear is? Fear is the absence of courage. Why do you think God said to, to, to Joshua... Be strong and courageous, brother. Be strong and courageous, brother. Be strong and courageous. Why? That's the opposite of fear. Don't be scared. Now notice notice this. Fight for your family. Fight for your friends. Listen to me. He, he's saying fight for your family. Fight for your friends. Okay. The victory will always go to the one that wants it more. Ask Coach right there. Pine Tree, put it on Gilmer the other night. Who wants it more? <laughs> what a victory. What a victory. I know there's probably some house divided in here. i got to be careful. <laughs> but Gilmer has been champions long enough, okay? Let the pirates have some. <laughs> right? Okay, watch this. Do you want your family more than the enemy does? Let me tell you what they used to do to baby elephants. They probably still do. The circus elephants, you know, as soon as they're a baby, they put them on that stake with the rope around them, around their foot, right? Rope around the foot, a little stake in the ground. Little elephant, however they sound. I don't think they can do that at that age. Pulling that foot, pull it. They can't, they can't get it out. Finally, they just stop. Remember, elephants got a good memory. Like, if you offend one of them, he'll get you later. <laughs> right? I was sitting at a circus one time. Head joker looking at me. I was like, uh-uh, I don't, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not that guy. <laughs> anyway, okay, here's what happened. That, that elephant, when it's full grown, can still be tied to that little stake. And all he got to do is just, and it's off of it. But it's, his mind says that he can't do it anymore. He can't do that because he couldn't do it when he was young. And the enemy, what he's saying, he said, if he can get a certain mindset with our kids, it's going to follow them all their life till the Lord does something, till, till people, men and women like us pray for them and we help them break the chains of that bad mindset. The devil wants our children bad. Why? You, you, you remember what uh, Hitler said? He said, if you give me the textbooks, I'll get the kids. If I can have, yeah, you see that wall, see? That preacher right there, that wall's trying to get y'all. Mm-hmm. Trying to get y'all. That's a good one. Okay, watch this. Verse 15. I ain't, last year, it hadn't happened this year because I done put the little shh all in, in the, 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 the foam spray. But I came in my office right there in the corner one, 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 uh, in the hot summer last year. Wasn't nothing but red walls in there everywhere. Had to get, we, me and Jody got up in, the, uh, uh, up in the attic, got over there, and uh, they, were, they were wanting that cold air coming out of that. They was in the attic wanting to get in the office because of the cold air. There were some cracks in there above the light fixtures. And then walls were just coming in, coming in. There was, there was thousands of them up there. We came in there loaded up. It was because that devil, you ain't coming in our house. And, man, we double-barreled it. Whoosh. It was awesome. <laughs> Had a preach right there. So watch verse 15. Ain't that right, Jody? Where's he at? He may be in the back. And it happened, watch this, when the enemies heard that it was known to us that God had brought their plot to nothing, that all of us returned to the wall. Everybody got back to work. See, they called the enemies bluff. They kept working. Amen? Verse 16, so it was from that time on 
that half of, watch this, mm, this is the good good. From that time on, half of my servants worked at construction, while the other half held the spears, the shields, the bows, the, the bows and the water armor, and the leaders were behind all the house of Judah. What is he saying? He says, I got your back. You keep working, I got your back. Listen, I don't know of a greater work in the kingdom of God is to have somebody's back. Right? To get somebody's back. That was a weak amen for that. We need to get each other's back. That's one of the biggest needs in the kingdom. People who want to get involved and they want to help rebuild one another's lives. People that are not scared to get their hands dirty for one another. There are too many, I, I, I did a message on this probably last year, but there's too many consumers and not enough producers. Give, 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 take, 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 give, 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 take, 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 take. And there's nobody producing. It, listen, it, it, if we run out of producers, then there ain't going to be nothing to consume. What you say? Verse 17. Oh, I love this one. Those who built on the wall, who carried burdens, loaded themselves so that with one hand they worked at construction and with the other hand they held a weapon. This is awesome right here. Give me a brick. Get back, devil. Right? Give me a brick. Get back, devil. Right? So... Get back, devil. To me, that's beautiful. You, work, okay, think about what you're doing. You work and war. 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 Church, what they were doing physically right here is what we should be doing every day spiritually in our life. We should have a hammer in one hand and the sword of the Spirit in the other hand, the Word of God in the other hand. We should be working on one hand and watching the back of our brother in the other hand. Watching your family's back, but you're still working. You, the, the, the work's not stopped. You work and war. You work and war. Is this making sense to anybody today? I'm telling you right now, Ephesians 6. Let's look at, look at Ephesians 6 on the screen. You can look at it. I'll read it right quick. Ephesians 6. Y'all know this very well. Look at it. Listen, just listen. Listen to this and think if you, if you don't think we're at war. It says in verse 12, it says, For we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Our, our fight's against principalities, powers, and rulers of this dark. We can't see that stuff. It's against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. We see the pawns of the work. We see the pawns of spiritual wickedness, don't we? All right? We see the voices. We see the pawns of that, right? But we don't, we don't fight that with actual swords, right? We get locked up. Verse 13. So it tells us to take up that, that armor of God that we will be able to withstand evil in the day. It's telling us to stand. It's telling us, everything we do, we stand. We stand. We gird our, our, our waist with truth. We put, we put righteousness over our heart. We put the gospel of peace on our feet. We have the shield of faith that's going to come against all the dead gum missiles and darts of the enemy. We put a helmet of salvation to protect our mindset on our head. And we grab the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And that's our only offensive weapon that we fight with. We got to do it. We got to work and we got to fight. We got to work and we got to war. We got to work and a war. And here's the thing. The devil will try to fatigue us in this. That's one of his greatest tools is to fatigue us. That, seriously, he, he wants to get you, get you wore out doing life. If he can get us putting more effort towards the wrong thing, we will give out. That's why a lot of us are at the end of our rope. We're burn out. We're give out. It's because we put too much effort on the wrong thing. Anybody with me on that? Think about it. I want to ask you today. What is fatiguing you today? What is wearing you out today? Because see, a fatigued individual is, is not going to war and is not going to work. It, it may can do one, but it can't do the other. That's why we need brothers and sisters to come along behind one another to help each other war and work. We got to have one another. Quit, quit, quit shunning everybody. 
We, we need prayer warriors in our life. We need somebody that will fight, and we need somebody to help you work. Nehemiah 6, we'll read this. One more scripture, we're done. Look at Nehemiah, I love this one right here. Whoo, watch this. Oh, here's Sanballat again. It happened when Sanballat, Tobiah, Geshem the Arab, and the rest of our enemies, see, they done, they done got a whole lot of other folk mad at them, heard that I rebuilt the wall. Come on, Nehemiah. They didn't stop him. You trying to rebuild your life today? God said, let's go. Let's do this. Remember that he is great and awesome. Fight. He heard I rebuilt the wall. There were no breaks in it, though at the time I had not hung the doors and the gates yet. So Sanballat and Geshem sent to me saying, hey, hey, Nehemiah, man, you've been doing so good. Let us meet together in the village of Ono. You see it? When you see something that says, oh, no, you better say it. Oh, no. Right? Y'all didn't believe this stuff in the Bible. What's in there? Oh, no. Right? But they thought to do me what? Harm. So I sent messengers and says, uh, Sam Ballot, Arab, I'm doing a great work, partner. I ain't coming down. I ain't coming down. I'm not coming down. Why should the work cease and me come down to you? Devil got you all worried. Devil got you all stirred up. But you on the ladder working. Those in here that work in construction, you work off ladders. You know how frustrating it is to get up there and drop something. Dead gummit. Right? Go back down. You don't, if you get up the ladder, especially when you're old, you don't want to have to come back down the ladder because that means you got to go back up. This is resistance right here. This is hard. You already got something in your mouth, something under your arm. You're trying to hold a screw, and it ain't working, and the thing's going backwards on you. So now you got to flip it, right? Anyway, listen, he says, I'm doing a good work. I ain't coming down for you. It'd be different if that was his wife down there with some plate of chicken. You know, yeah, I'll come down for that. Or if your kids would need that, I'll come down for that. This is the devil lying to you, trying to get you off the ladder, trying to stop your work. The devil is trying to stop you. Don't let the devil get you off your ladder. That's the message. Don't let the devil get you off of your ladder. You know what you need to do. You've got a vision. You've got a plan. You've got a purpose. He has destroyed you before. So now you've learned from that. He said, nope, I see that coming. I see that coming. I'm not going to fall for this again. You know when he sneaks in there and says, hey, you know, it's been a while since you've had a drink. You deserve one. Oh, I know you can't go to sleep tonight. Don't you need to pop them pills? You, you, need, you need some more of them pills. Don't, don't, aren't you hurting so bad? You're hurting so bad right now. Oh, them pills will make you feel so much better. Oh, this stuff right here, this stuff right here. Just hit this. It'll help you sleep. It'll help you chill out. Devil trying to get you off your ladder. He's trying to get you focused on anything and everything but the Lord. Because what you're doing is a great work. Is this making sense to anybody? Now, why is he trying to get him off the ladder right now? Because he's building a gate. Y'all know as well as I do, if you didn't have a gate to your backyard, what would you have to do? Jump the fence. Some of you right now, your thing's so uh, yeah, wore out or it's so uh, rusted up. And, and you put some WD on that stuff so you can go through the gate. You're going to catch the hinder parts of you going over that chain link fence. Yeah. It's happened. It's happened, hasn't it? It's happened. I know. I, I heard you in the laugh. It's happened. Okay? Why do you have a gate in any of your fences? Because that's how you go in and come out. Listen to me. They hadn't had, the, they hadn't had a gate yet. So they could still come in. If they could get him to stop, if they could get Nehemiah to stop, then, then the gates wouldn't be there. And they could, guess what? They could get in the city. They could still do some damage if the gates are not built. The gates is where you come in and go out. It's where you come in. And it's where you go out. We need to get back on the ladder. Listen to me. We need to get back on the ladder. We need to fix the gates of our home and so the lives of our children won't be affected like they are right now. 
See, some of us on, uh, uh, we, <laughs> we're, we, oh, we need, to get, we need to get back on the ladder. Because, see, when we get down off the ladder, then we're doing other things, and we'll let that, that device babysit. And then when you let the device babysit, I know you can some, but you got to know what they're looking at. You wouldn't believe what's on there now. Stay on the ladder. This is it. I'm done. Deuteronomy 28. You got to go there with me. Deuteronomy 28. We're done right here. Let me encourage you right quick. Deuteronomy. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Or look at it on the screen. If you're so weary of the war, you're not flipping anymore. <laughs> don't ever let that happen. You're so weary of the war, you, you don't flip anymore. Deuteronomy 28. Look at verse 6. Please hear me in it. We're done. Everybody there? Blessed shall you be. When I hear that, my ears are perked up. When you come in and blessed shall you be when you go out. What does that mean? Okay, right now we're out. Okay. I mean, we're in here, but we're out. Okay. But then when we're going to get home, we're going to go in. Okay, we're going to go in. There's a reason for going in and there's a reason for coming out. Okay? Let me ask you something. Are we coming in and going out well? Because, because God says he wants to bless you coming in and going out. And I know that sounds confusing right now, but let's think about it for a minute. When you're at work and at war, at some point you're going to get weary. And you've got to come in. Why do you come in? Well, you come in, and while you're in, you get refreshed, you get encouraged, you get refueled, and you get reminded. Okay, let's think about that again. Those are great, some great points to write down. They're all, we'll just do all ours. You get refreshed, you get refueled, and you get reminded. You've been at work, you've been at war, now you're fatigued, so you come in. You don't keep going in fatigue. You come in... Come in, right? That's why the Lord says, hey, we need to work six and, and, and rest one. Doesn't matter which one it is, just rest one. It's a great principle, by the way. If not, we're going to give out. We're going to be old quicker than we're supposed to. Here we go. we got to come in, and what are we going to do while we're in? We're going to get refreshed, right? We're going to get refueled. And what else? We're going to be reminded. Reminded of what? What we're doing it for. Because, listen, when you come in and when you're in, you know what happens? You're in in the Word. You're getting you refueled in the Word. You, 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 you're looking at your babies around your table. You, 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 you see the people in your life. You, you realize who your friends are. You look what God is doing in your life because you've taken a moment and got still and know that He is God. And you realize what you're fighting for. You remember what you're fighting for. So you want to be ready. You want to be girded back up. For when you go out. And God says that you will be blessed going in and blessed going out. And you say, well, what about the devil? What about the devil? What about what the devil is doing? I'm glad you asked. Keep reading verse 7. The Lord will cause your enemies to rise against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come out against you one way, but they get gone seven ways. Let's go. Let's go. What, what does that mean? Well, he come in just one enemy. But the Lord tore his tail up so much. <laughs> he came, he scattered, right? It's like he came in as a shotgun shell and he left as birdshot, right? You, you know, shotgun is full of little BBs, and, right? That's how the, the enemy comes in, but he gets his tail tore up. How? Because of the Lord. Because of the Lord. You've been putting in your work, and you, now you, 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 you at war. And listen, and you got to realize, the war, you really don't even have to fight it. It's his fight. Our part is just to honor him. And know, listen, and know what's true, 
and don't let the lies affect you. Listen to that. Because when the liar starts mouthing off, you know what's true and what's not true. And you ain't going to let it come near you. The Lord says, you got to get gone. He cannot stand in truth. He cannot stand in truth, but we can. The devil can't stand in truth, but we can. The Lord is great, and he is awesome. We need to fight. And when we come in, come in. Be there. Get refreshed. Get refueled. That's where the eating comes in. Right? <laughs> That's where the word comes in. And we'll be reminded this is what we're doing this for. Because when we lose focus of what we're fighting for, we're in a bad place. So I pray for those right now that, that are struggling right now. And if you need somebody to come and be with you, you got to let somebody know that you're in a fight and you're in a bad place. You got to let one of your brothers, one of your sisters know. You need to let, if you trust me, trust me, trust me. I'd love to fight with you. I'd love to pull weeds with you. I'd love to get thorns out of there. I'd love to help you rebuild your wall. So don't say nobody cares. I do. And there's more than I do in here. There's a whole church in here that cares. That's what church is about. Brothers and sisters that come and we got each other's back. We're all fighting the same fight. We're all going to struggle. Be honest with one another. Say, I struggle with this. I struggle with that. I'm addicted to this. I'm addicted to that. I, I, I'm addicted to this. I, I'm, I'm struggling with this. I made a bad decision here. What should I do? And let's, let's help one another. Amen. If you would, bow your heads. Is it possible that you would say today, Lord, I know what it means to be broken. I know what it means to have my gates burned down. I know what it means that my light went out, that my hope is struggling, my peace is struggling. I know what it is, but Lord, you have restored me. Is it possible that you could say right now that I want to help? That I want to help work? I want to help somebody else? Is it possible that's you today? Could you, could you go to war with somebody else? For somebody else? Because if that's so, all you got to do is ask the Lord right now. Say, Lord. Say, Lord, you know my area of influence. You know those in my life, in, in my life. How can I help them? Lord, show me wh where, where I need to, what I need to do here. There's nothing better than for someone to come to you and say, Hey, I'm here to help in any way. Just let me know. That's one of the most beautiful things that, that, that we could ever hear. But the problem is today, and you can go to all these businesses today, and the most of them have a help wanted sign up. Help wanted sign everywhere right now. And it makes me wonder, is there a help wanted sign at the kingdom door of God? Because we already know that there is. Because he says, listen, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Wouldn't it be beautiful to see that person in your life, that, 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 that person at work or, or, or the, the one you see at the ball field or whatever, wouldn't it be awesome to see them bearing fruit again? Or maybe they're, they're, maybe they're going to bear fruit for the first time. And you get to be a part of the, 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 the process of helping weed out the garden and help, help build that wall to keep the wolves out.
What is that wall? That wall is the foundation of Jesus Christ, his word, surrounding you. We see it in Job where he puts a hedge of protection around his people. We can pray for a hedge of protection around one another. And listen, if you're in here today and it's you, it's you, you're the one. Man, you've, you've went through something here lately and it's just devastated you. Maybe you've run out of gas. You, you just, you're so fatigued right now. Listen, don't be afraid to ask for help. Lord's got plenty of help. Father, I thank you for this word today. I pray that there's not one thing the devil can do to get us off the ladder. That we will proclaim how great and awesome you are. And we will fight for our brothers and our sisters and our sons and our daughters and our family and our friends. Lord, those that are in here right now that are so fatigued, I pray you give them rest. I pray, though, that they realize that where their rest comes from. It doesn't come from the hills. It comes from you. You said if we wait upon you, those that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength and we will soar on wings like eagles. We will walk and we won't faint. We will run and not grow weary. Lord, your word says if we come bearing precious seed, it says we will come rejoicing, bringing our harvest with us. I pray for seeds of faith and seeds of hope in this room today. Somewhere a starting point to begin to rebuild. And Lord, I pray that Prayer would become one of our battle tools here. That we realize we get to pray. We get to talk to you. Before Jesus came to this earth, Lord, people would stand with their goat for a year before they could even sacrifice to you. And have a, a, a priest pray for them. That ain't how it is anymore. Lord, the veil is torn. Your spirit dwells in your people. Jesus has made a way. And we can go straight to you, Lord, because of Jesus and his blood. What a, an amazing God we serve. So, Lord, I know you hear us. You hear us all at once. That's a big God. So, Lord, I pray this over my family, my friends. I pray it over the folks in this room today, those that would listen to this message later, that, God, they would know that you're great and you're awesome. And you love to rebuild. You love to restore. You love to rescue. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And this church said, Amen. Amen. If you would stand. We're going to sing us one more song before we leave.